How does the body maintain a constant internal, internal temperature despite constant temperature changes outside the body? This is regulation of body heat. Your body produces metabolic heat as a byproduct of the incredible number of chemical reactions that occur inside your body 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Your internal temperature needs to stay pretty constant because the enzymes in your body work best at 37 degrees Celsius. If your enzymes were to stop working efficiently, the reactions in your body would occur much too slowly to keep you alive. Your body is constantly monitoring and adjusting its processes to maintain fairly stable and constant internal conditions. This state is called homeostasis. An organism's ability to maintain its body temperature within tolerable limits is known as thermal regulation. To maintain correct body temperature, mammals must be able to produce and conserve body heat in colder temperatures. Also, they must be able to eliminate excess body heat in warmer temperatures. My lab partner, Heidi, is going to help us explore how temperature regulation represents the balance between internal heat production from metabolic sources and body heat lost to the environment outside the body. The first thing we need to do is to make sure my lab partner is okay with being the test subject. Heidi, will you be okay sticking your hand in this very cold water? Sure, absolutely. Great, thank you. Right, so it's gonna be in water for about two minutes. I've already connected these two temperature links in SparkView, and I can tell which is which because the number on the sensor box matches the number on the y-axis for each graph. Let's attach the left temperature probe to the left hand with a piece of tape right here, the index finger by the knuckle. Does that feel like it's gonna stay? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's good. All right, and we'll do the same on the right hand. Here's the right side temperature sensor. Whoops. Does that feel good? Yeah. Okay. We're good. All right. Notice how Heidi is sitting com comfortably in a chair so she can relax and rest both hands on the table. And now we're ready to start collecting data. First, we will see what Heidi's baseline skin temperature is, and this will be the control run. For the next six minutes, Heidi will sit relaxed in the chair, sitting quietly with both hands in place, not looking at the data while it's being collected. Are you ready, Heidi? I sure am. Okay, I'm gonna start collecting data now and we'll speed up data collection for you. Let's look at the results. Y1 is the left hand, and according to the legend, the left hand run color is purple. Y2 is the right hand, and that run color is green. Sketch the results in graph one. Include numbers, labels, units, and add a key to identify each hand in your graph. Pause the video and continue playback when you are ready. Now let's see how Heidi's skin temperature responds to moving air. The fan is set up so it only blows on her right hand, but not on her left hand. I'm gonna turn on the fan and start collecting data, and I'm gonna collect data for six minutes. But during the first two minutes, the fan will be on so we can see if there is a response to moving air. Then for the remaining four minutes, the fan will be off so we can see if and how body temperature recovers after a change. Heidi, are you relaxed and ready? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go, and we will speed through data collection for you. It's been two minutes, so I'm going to turn off the fan and let data collection continue for the next four minutes. Sketch the results in graph two. Remember to add a key, numbers, labels, and units. Pause the video now and continue when you are ready. 
Finally, let's see how the body responds to a cold temperature. The ice bath should be between four and eight degrees Celsius and ours is at about seven. So we are good to go. Heidi, could you tell us how your hands will be set up? Sure, sure. So my left hand's gonna stay relaxed on the table, but my right hand will be in the ice water. I don't want my whole hand in there because the temperature sensor needs to stay out of the water, but I need to get all my fingers and the palm of my hand covered in the ice water. I'm gonna try my best to keep my hand in there for two minutes, even though it will be uncomfortable. But if it becomes too painful, I know that it's okay to remove my hand before the two minutes are up. Right, so um, the first two minutes in the water, the run will be six minutes long, and after two minutes, Heidi will take her hand out of the ice bath, and I will dry it quickly. And the last four minutes of data collection will show body temperature once the right hand is removed from the ice water and is dried. Heidi, are you relaxed and ready? All right, let's do this. Okay, we will speed through data collection for you. Here we go, go ahead. Okay. Two minutes, you can take your water, your hand out of the water, and I'm gonna dry the hand. Okay. Sketch the results in graph three. Remember to add a key, numbers, labels, and units. Pause the video now and continue when you're ready. Thank you, Heidi, for being my lab partner. Hey, thanks for including me. Sure, and now it's time for the analysis. You'll be looking for trends across all three conditions captured in the SparkView data. You can hide and show runs in the legend. So you can look at one condition at a time or see all three runs at once. It's best to view each run individually at full scale. So click the scale button as needed. Let me turn on the fan run here and scale it. Answer the questions at the end of the lab and after thinking through those questions, you should be able to explain a few scenarios that make it possible for people in the warm tropical paradise of Hawaii to suffer from hypothermia, which is a dangerous and potentially deadly situation where your body loses heat faster than it can produce it. Good luck with your lab.